There's no stopping the new Trump biopic, Bill Paxton's dark sequel that never was, and Emma Stone brings Nathan Fielder to the big screen. Oh, it's time for class. Class is in session! Roll call! Bueller. I'm gonna be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? You're late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom! Hello, classmates, and welcome to another episode of Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Joseph. I'm Peter. And I'm Tyler. And we have a great show for you today. Welcome, everyone, on YouTube Live and otherwise, and of course, the OG classmates listening in podcast land. Yeah, mm. yeah, here Our we are. Dedicated audio listeners. Yeah. Hey, hey we're all, all wearing dark shirts. Oh, yes, yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, optimum for a live stream <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> video. <laughs> is it? Is it bad or good? I mean, we have we have a very colorful background. Oh, luckily, sure. What does that say right there? Huh? What does it say? It just says bear hug. Bear hug? Yeah. Bear hug. What does that mean? That's cool. Yeah. Just a bear. It hug? looks like embroidery. You have embroidery on your t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You Damn, mean, that's fancy. Where'd you get that? From <laughs> bear hug. From bear hug, California. Yeah. Oh. And now closed business. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> oh well. But yeah, enough about my shirt and <laughs> our dark shirts. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. Hey, look, Joel, yes. Joel's in the chat. Hell yeah. Joel. We got Joel, Joe Bridges. Yeah, what's up? Mm. And Angie. Angie. Who pops in usually at the beginning of the chat and just says hi. And the and dork we, of all dorks. And we never see her again. Oh, what's up, Heather? How you doing? Oh. Talking about pickles and sauerkraut and, yeah. and recipes. Sa- a what? Sourdough starters, homemade beef jerky, <laughs> homemade hot. If, 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 what's it called? If Eric comes on, he could talk about his homemade hot sauce. He's got hot sauce. Oh, he makes hot sauce. Oh, yeah. He Did sent, you get it? He sent me a bottle and uh, FedEx destroyed it. They destroyed it. Literally, the, the package was soaking wet when I got it. And I'm I, not surprised. I opened it up and there was just chunks of glass and jalapeno yeah. juice. Oh, oh, my God. It I'm was, not, I'm not it was very sad. I, I, I contemplated slurping some of it just, from the package. <laughs> just taking some. It yeah. smelled good. Licking the cardboard. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know what kind of, you know, how it was handled. I'm not surprised. Su- Legionnaire's disease or something I was going to get from sucking on that. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Jalapeno I'm not, sauce. I'm not surprised it was destroyed. <laughs> those still, those, still those don't shippers know. do not still give a crap. Eric sauce. Well, he's got like he's got like six batches. Oh, okay, different <laughs> flavors and stuff. Mm. T- Tyler, you sound upset about FedEx. Are they your nemesis? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not upset about it. I just said I'm not surprised because you know, due to the nature of my work, people who ship these packages, they do not give a crap about the packages. They're just throwing them all around. Yourself including? Stepping. Yeah, myself included. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. So- like I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, no, I do know what to say because stop ordering online. FedEx doesn't stop care. It. FedEx doesn't care about packages. DHL doesn't care about uh, care about fences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring that up again. We're not People's litigating that again. property <laughs> is 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 less than packages. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was green back then. Tyler, Tyler I'm still has an, now. Tyler still hasn't admitted to his fault when he backed over that person's fence and fled. I have admitted as much to it, but you didn't do anything to correct it. What would I? What would I have done? What would I have done? Go to their house and tell them. Written a formal. Oh, apology. in their in their, in their <laughs> formal. Like yeah. I just posted a. I posted a letter. I'm sorry. I backed up into it's your like, fence. Yeah, it's like one of those uh, videos where the the father says, you know, <clears throat> he, make, he makes their kid hold a sandwich a, a, a sign on the side of the road or something that said, "I stole from my grandmother" or something like oh, that. Oh, that. Dis- okay. The disciplinary no. action. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're no. like. It's like public shaming. Yeah, public shaming. <laughs> Oh, okay. So That's you want, want? Yeah. Well, I'm already publicly just put a sign ashamed. around your neck. <laughs> I ran over I are, the fence. I, oh, like in the beginning of Die Hard Three when Bruce Willis oh, yeah. is undercover and he's got the the racist. He says, "I sign. hate everyone." Oh, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the TV edit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already publicly shamed on a daily basis. Well, weekly. <laughs> oh, weekly too. Every time this episode, weekly, down, daily, this, this monthly, monthly yearly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Es- I can't escape it by hourly. the minute. <laughs> by the minute. <laughs> Can't go two minutes without yeah. really one shame yeah. of Tyler. <laughs> well, I mean, it's great to be back in the studio after my oh, yeah, infirmity. Oh, yeah, you back. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, thank you. You sound good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel a lot better. It's a super hot weather. Sleeping with socks on. <laughs> That's what it does it. Mm. Yeah, I think I think so. I think, some, I, I think I might be onto something. Keeps there. it nice and moist. Yeah. Sleep <laughs> nude, but with only black business socks. Only socks, nothing else. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's how I make my love. Ew, okay. Well, that's that's just good business right there. Oh. <laughs> well, I can get the girls get to wear knee high socks, but I don't get to wear anything. Yeah, <laughs> that's, good. that's a fair point. That's a fair point. That's my lingerie. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah, yeah. No, I mean you hit the nail on the head. 
All right. I don't know what we're talking about now, but uh, let's move on to Gabby Chatter. Find some charity in you, lad. Now's the time for Gab and Chatter. Gab and Chatter movie news, movie discussion, things to talk about that are hopefully related to movies in the media world. Pete. <laughs> me? Uh, me? One breath. Oh, Pete. Okay. First off, before I get into my news story, I have an email from Gossip Girl. Oh, oh no. yes. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, oh, yes, no. we got an email from Gossip Girl. Oh, no. Yes, that's I'm right. Sure, I'm sure it's about me. Right. It is about you, Tyler. <laughs> How'd you guess? I fucking knew it. <laughs> we are very curious <clears throat> to who this person is. <clears throat> yeah, because right. I didn't know if we even talked about this on air, to be honest, but we must have. Yeah. How, how would they know? I, unless it's a, a, <laughs> no, a I mole. Think I, no, I think... I think <laughs> so listeners that are new to the show, they might know, goss- may not know that Gossip Girl was a, a mysterious writer who disparaged me, who basically took you to task for using the word like too much. Right. Yeah. And that prompted, yeah. that was not the only email that we received about that particular complaint. And it prompted a new editing tool that we have called Descript, which basically goes through your mm-hmm. entire mm-hmm. show, your audio feed mm. and uh, finds fill words and then edits them out. So if you hear some like choppy sort of stuff every once in a while, it's probably because of that program. The yeah. computer program are cutting out a billion likes and uhs and ums and yeah. things like that. Mm. Yeah. So anyways, last email from Gossip Girl basically said, like Tyler, like, <laughs> to, like do better or something like that. And then just signs it XOXO, GG, Gossip Girl. <laughs> so this new email came in immediately after this last episode. <clears throat> okay. On Monday, new first, first day of release. Oh, wow. And said, should Tyler continue to share his AI images, Gossip Girl will share the truth about his stinky feet. XOXO, GG. Wait a minute. What? How would how she know the stench of my, of my pegs? Did we, did we talk about Tyler's socks on air? I think we did. We did, okay. I, on the live stream. Okay. Like, I don't think it made it to, like, the hard edit, but on the live stream. She must have like, she must have been there. Why you, wouldn't make it to the, edit, uh, the I audio? Version. I don't cut much out of the of the show. Okay, so it probably was. I would have to go back into the archives, but uh, d- okay. What? The, what? What? Where does she? Where <laughs> I don't she, know. I don't what know. She okay. care, where does she care about my stinky but feet? But the, the the thing that confused me when I read that was the truth. Yeah, what's the truth? What is the truth behind that? The truth. <laughs> the truth about my stinky feet. Yeah. What is what? What are you doing with your feet? I I just I. <laughs> It genetics. I don't know. I mean, mm. I bathe myself regularly. Uh, Define regularly. <laughs> what is your regular? Yeah, <laughs> and just know whatever you say, we're gonna double that. Yeah. How about we don't go into that? <laughs> no, no, I do. I do. I don't I, like. I I admit it as much that yes, yes. Do my feet stink? Uh, they can, but you can't smell them now because I've been. Paying much more wow, attention to. <laughs> <laughs> I just appreciate that you change your socks before you get here. I did, yes, yeah, yeah, and I even take them off too, mm. just to just to be safe. But the, you heard her though. Gossip Girl said, "Should you continue to share AI images? AI images on your social media?" I've been I've been sending I, screenshots of Tyler. No, you only send one. I, I know. Yes, I, I'll like, send another one d- d- to you right now. What do you mean you send? That? No, d- d- no, there's no there's no AI image that I've shared. Yeah. In yeah. I, what do you mean? Absolutely. When? What? No. Mm-hmm. No. He's keeping tabs. Yeah, whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, this is probably I, AI. Well, no, I've been looking. I've been looking at the hashtags to, because it'll say hashtag AI art, and then I sometimes won't share it. sometimes it's on the profile. What, yeah, what about this one, Sir what? Gilead the Fourth? Is that the, that's not an AI image? Do you go to the you Instagram go to the page, page. Show Gilead the Fourth created with help from Mid Journey AI posting every day. Oh, right I didn't there. go. I didn't even go to the profile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look I at had that. no, I had no idea. I had no idea. This one's not I even know. a big titty goth girl. It's just a we don't know titty night girl because she's wearing uh, a we don't full, know suit of, <laughs> full suit of armor. <laughs> I had no idea. But I there's didn't... a trend here. Look at those lips. Tyler's Tyler can't resist <laughs> his 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 anime women. <laughs> So. Well, I had no, I had no idea. I didn't even go to the profile. Like, Anyways, I just, I Gossip thought, Girl, if you, I will, I will continue to call out Tyler about his AI oh sharing. Oh my god! 
And then oh if God. you want to share the real truth, whatever that is, I'm what curious. What real truth? There's Time no, that we hear the truth. We want the truth. <laughs> the, what truth? What truth? I don't understand, Gossip Girl. What truth do you want from me? Um, is Gossip Girl is like, is, is she anonymous? Yeah, yes. she is. No, like she is anonymous. Like she is the... Oh, the, she's anonymous. She, the, the group, the hacking the, group? Yes, yeah. She, oh, she is know. anonymous. I think Maybe. It's, I think it's from a show. Well, now I feel like my life is in danger. I feel like my life is in danger now. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Gossip Girl is Matthew Burdick. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, so that's that. Thanks, Gossip Girl. Anybody else? Write in mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Read your email on the air. All right. <laughs> okay. So, my actual news story is the new Trump biopic oh, yeah. called The Apprentice is coming to theaters soon. This is starring Jeremy Strong as Roy Cohn and Sebastian Stan as Trump himself. Oh, they should have they should have casted Tim Heidecker as Trump. That would have been the perfect. No, he would have liked that too much. <laughs> uh, so it's debuting at Con, and it's reportedly there's a, a backer specifically that backed the actual film, donated millions of dollars supposedly to this uh, film, thinking that it was going to be a. Um, oh no. Like a positive view po- yeah. biopic for, yes. for, for, for Trump, right? Yes. <laughs> and this this gentleman found out really that there's he used to actually be the owner of the Washington Sentinels, which is used to be Washington Redskins. His name's Dan Snyder. Mm. So he's chums with Trump, and he generously donated towards the political Trump's political career in the past. He was under the impression that the the Apprentice would paint Trump in a flattering light. Instead, an early script for the movie included a scene in which Trump rapes his first wife, Ivana. Jesus. And the finished product also includes a violent fight between the couple, according to an insider who spoke to Variety. So Dan Snyder is now reportedly so furious about the film that his contributions helped create that he enlisted lawyers to try to halt the release with cease and desist letters and may not attend the Apprentice's con premiere. Mm. Yeah. Love that. That (laughs) That is incredible. Yeah, I love that, and I think Sebastian Stan is the perfect pick for that because I don't know what he looks like. I feel like Trump. You could, you, no, Sebastian Stan. Every time I see him, you forget what he looks like. Yeah, he's like he's like a chameleon. He's in a new role. And he I'm looks like, like Greg Kinnear, or not Greg Kinnear, Mark Hamill, mm. a little bit. Yeah, I think I, I. I mean, you could probably make a movie out of the making of this movie too. Probably yeah. the making of the making of. Yeah. So, uh, I cut a couple comments in the in the chat. First of all, have you either you guys seen Godzilla minus one yet? I have not. Yeah, no. I saw it when it came out. Okay. Oh yeah, you did. You know the cool, the cool guy, like the smart little guy with the cool hair, the old dude. <laughs> uh, I can't, yeah. Oh I yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Cool as fuck. Heather says that. Uh, let's see where's it coming here. Tyler's about to give the Godzilla minus one dude a hair competition. What? Wait, did you watch? Godzilla? That's a, that's no, a compliment. Said, no. oh, that's a compliment. Uh, that's a compliment. Okay, thank you. He's thank got, you. Finally, he's, he's something. Got, so, finally, a compliment. <laughs> Someone on Team Tyler. <laughs> yeah. He's got S tier hair. <laughs> Yeah, my hair's been looking great recently. Thank you very much. And Joe Bridges says, it's weird the president biopic movies keep getting made when only the popular president movies have been mostly about JFK or All the President's Men, which is mostly about the journalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think presidents are fascinating figures in general, whether or not they're good or bad. Didn't Daniel whatever. Day Lewis play uh, Lincoln? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I don't know if that was considered like popular or whatever. No, it wasn't. I, I remember it being not that popular. Mm-hmm. Heather says that's absolutely a compliment. I thought it, I thought it last week when I was out in the wild. She's thinking about you. Oh. Post, not even during the live stream. Oh, see, that's Tyler's fan club right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, what 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 if what should they call you? What you should you call your fan club the Noe Nuggets? I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I no. Ty- Please no. Team Tyler. Yeah, Team Tyler. I mean, that's, I mean it's, that seems a little on the nose. Yeah, or the, the Tyler Union. The Tyler Union? I don't know. That's, yeah, that's, no, that's, a, that's a little bit of a ripoff. Yeah, that's, that's a bad one. Yeah, that's a bit of a rip- Yeah, thank you. Chat, think amongst yourself. Heather says she's going to have a shirt made. Uh, <laughs> Heather, if you if you have an idea for a shirt, send, send it to me on on, uh, on Twitter, and uh, uh, we'll put it in the store. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, that's it. I just thought it was a kind of a funny story. Yeah, and yeah, the movie it's is, very punk rock. And the movie's interesting just because it's... I, I have a hard time believing they're going to be able to get away with this and not get sued. I mean, what? how would they get sued, though? It's, it's Implying that someone who's still living was a rapist without any particular knowledge about it? It's not implied. It. It's in court documents. <laughs> if they use a particular incident that's in court documents, perhaps. 
I, I mean, just, I don't know enough about it to know for sure. They could, I, I guess they could get sued if they're like using actual names. They could have gone the way of. <laughs> it's, it's a Trump biopic. Well, I know, but I'm thinking about. I'm <laughs> Tyloids. <laughs> that sounds like a, it's like typhoid. Yeah. <laughs> Ty- tyloid <laughs> fever. <laughs> tyloid fever. I got the fever. Yeah. <laughs> my I, prescription is more Tyloid. I had a bad sauerkraut sandwich and I had to take a couple of Tyloids to calm my stomach down. Mm, yeah. Tyloids. That's a, yeah, that's a good, that's I'm a good, suffering uh, from a medica- bad case a, of Tyloids. Yeah, that's a good medication <laughs> name. It's like hemorrhoids, but worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking uh, more in the vein of Gus Van Sant's <laughs> movie about Kurt Cobain, Last Days, where... They don't say his name, mm. but like you can imply that oh, it's it's that you, he's you know, Kurt Cobain. Yeah, you can imply. I'm pretty you, or sure. I not imply. Infer that. I'm it's pretty Kurt. sure that it's, they're using the real names in this because okay. Cause, so uh, what's his name is playing Ray Roy Cohn. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Strong is playing from. Uh, I'm not Donald Trump. Yeah. I'm Thomas Tom Trump. I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're probably going to have to suffer some legal struggles for the release of this movie, which probably will hinder its popularity. Mm-hmm. Like, it'll be buried, and I don't know. I, I, I think it's... There was a, I think it's a too soon to do something like that as well. There was a Trump movie made whoops, a, a with there Brendan was? Gleeson. Really? Yeah. I think it was a movie, or maybe it was like a trailer for a movie. There was a Brendan Gleeson movie where Brendan Gleeson played Trump. Mm. Oh, interesting. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just, it, it's too soon. It's too soon because, you know, he might be... He the, just got sentenced, man. Give the man a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not sentenced. Yeah. He found, was found guilty. Yeah, he's yeah. actually got convicted. It's yeah. like, it's come on. He just got convicted. You remember, like, do you remember when you were kids and, <laughs> and someone's like, you know, if you get caught stealing, you'll never be able to be president. <laughs> <laughs> no! Dang it! This guy's got 34 felonies. I knew His I should have. His chief of staff is a felon. Everybody he surrounds himself is a felon. Yeah. People are still voting for this fucking guy. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't, I, you're telling I me I can't be either. president because yeah. I stole a gummy bears from a blockbuster? Nope, can't do it. <laughs> God damn it. I no, shouldn't you can't have be taken president. those sour Skittles. You can't be president because you weren't born in America, Joseph. Oh, that's right. I wasn't born yeah. in America. I forgot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's right no matter how hard you try you'll never be president no roseville's the, not america nope no. <laughs> but Bro- the re- roseville is <laughs> but the reason why i think it's too soon is because i feel like it should have been i feel like the story should be marinated on and you know stew a little bit and nah fuck him <laughs> yeah, well. you can make a second one and maybe he doesn't even need a like, platform in that kind of vein how like, how, know, like, how is it a platform because it it, it just it just it'll rile It'll rile up the right wing, you think, and then it'll everyone will be frothing at frothing at the mouth. Uh. Oh my god, this is just left wing media. Like it just, I think you can do it in a way <laughs> where it's effective, but it has to be more into the future. Well, now I feel like my opinion doesn't matter. You think that, um, like when like after World War II and after Hitler killed himself, people mm. were like. What? make a movie now it's waited like 10 years (laughs) (laughs) at least he just died yeah you know yeah i don't know it's like for for at least for my opinion i think Mm -hmm. that as far as trump goes one tim heidecker is the perfect choice to play trump like he had like tim heidecker's losing me over the years he's turning into a real dickhead yeah kind of i agree with that but he's basically he he probably goes golfing with trump no. Yeah. Not, no. Mm, I don't. Mm, what, what makes you assume no. that? What, what makes you? Assume? Anyways, that's my story, Joseph. <laughs> Wait, no, it's Tyler's. <laughs> yeah, it's my story. You're, you're running the show. I'm just throwing to you. Oh yeah, that's right. I am running the show. All right. That's right. All right. We're gonna turn Taz's camera off. Mute his mic. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Okay. Yeah, that's it. All so, right. Cool. Tyler. All right. So uh, I came across this story on SlashFilm.com, and it was Bill Paxton rest in peace his soul uh (laughs) he came out in a 2012 quote-unquote random roles interview with the av club's will harris paxton who died unexpectedly five years ago or five years later of a stroke at the age of 61 revealed that he would have loved to direct a second twister and if anyone doesn't know we are getting a sequel to twister called twisters yeah Uh, just i hate that name it, but wait so but don't you love aliens yeah but that makes sense twisters, twisters make sense too because there's more than one yeah it, it, why I, why does alien and aliens work but twister and twisters doesn't 
I don't know. It 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 just it just you it just rubs, want it rubs, to be mad. Rubs, you just want to be mad. No, it rubs it rubs me off the wrong way. Rubs you off, <laughs> but it still rubs you off. I don't think there's a wrong way to be rubbed off. <laughs> yeah, we got there in the end. Yeah, I, <laughs> and that's what really matters. Well. <laughs> Revealed that he would have loved to d- direct a second Twister, mm-hmm. one that that give a viewers a wider, wilder, more visually immersive ride. <coughs> he goes on to saying, I've always felt like there was a Jaws version of that movie, says Paxson. I've always felt like we did the Pepsi Light version of that movie. Huh. How could a, Pepsi ca- Light. How could a caffeinated Paxson take on Twister play out? Here's what he told Harris. There's a tougher version of that movie that I think now I've kind of designed it so that me and Helen Hunt would have a daughter, a junior in high school, but she's already dating a guy in college. That was kind of suspect. (laughs) And we've kind of handed off to them. There's a great story of the tri-state tornado. I'd like to tie into it as well. So if you don't know about the tri-state tornado, that happened in 1925 and it went through Three states, and it was huge. <laughs> Tri, <laughs> hence the name. I hence, the, hence the name Tri-State. But the, the have you seen? When was the last time you watched Twister? Oh man, how, it, how it, long ago? How it, long ago? I haven't seen Twister. Decades, really? Oh, yeah. it's a fun. It, it had to <clears> have been. De- it had to been a decade. I watched it on VHS a little while ago, a couple, yeah. couple years back. Does it still hold up? Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. And, and there is a slight implication. The, the twister that killed Helen Hunt's dad is the same twister they're chasing. So it is kind of like a Jaws. <laughs> and so that, that's, How is that possible? That's what it's, it, it's not. It's, but it's a never-ending like, twister. It's back. Yeah, it's back. <laughs> I mean, El Nino is all around all the time. Yeah, it's just somewhere true. in the world. Yeah, exactly. So I thought it was really interesting that Bill Paxton was so passionate about um, the story of Twister and that he saw like a vision of a jaws like entity you could say describe it as I just, and I just think it's weird that they don't acknowledge that they kind of did that in the first one well yeah but i think he was trying to go more for the mood of jaws like because bill paxton would be like he would do like the whole thing like the scratch like in the <laughs> what in the diner <laughs> on the he, table oh like he's, yeah, he's the captain of the yeah boat. he's the he's the captain he's just like I've seen that monster before. <laughs> Looking into its cold, dead black eyes, like a doll's eye. Yeah. In the eye of the storm. <laughs> I'll kill it for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in that same I'll vein. That twister. But what really threw me off with this quote was that he had his this junior high daughter dating a college student. That threw me off because when I was reading the story, I was like, what he's it's, just he's just giving an homage to Spielberg and Lucas. Yeah, that's that's exactly that's exactly where I was going at. I won't do the movie if, unless she's eleven years old and he's thirty. <laughs> what? Interesting. What are you talking Stop about? Mental? Get some help. It's the same idea. <laughs> but <laughs> so yeah, that kind of that kind of threw me off for a little bit, but it got me a little bit curious on how he would direct that movie. Now there's no details in the article, how, like what the story would be. It was just that he expressed interest that he wanted to do it. And then, yeah, he had a stroke and he stroked out and died. Uh, So Tyler, put that away. You're very interested in those junior high student. Yeah. I don't know. What? What? (laughs) Consider me around. No, you shut up. (laughs) Yeah. I would love, I would love to see that, but uh, yeah, rest in peace, Bill Paxson. But I, it also kind of uh, reinvigorated my uh, interest in the <sighs> new uh, Twister movie that's going to come out. Terrible name, though. Twisters, yeah. No. It should have been called... Uh, well, <laughs> I th- I was thinking about what you, what could you call a Twister sequel? Twister. Name? There's more. I would. I was <laughs> Twister I was, 2, Back with a Vengeance. I was going to say, just go like hammy, like Twister, the Dark Cloud or something like that. Colon, col- Twister, colon... Twister something, something. Vortex. Twister. No, I got it right here. Twister 2, Enter the Suck Zone. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's a quote from the first one. The I mean, Suck Zone. Philip Seymour Hoffman's character. Oh, yeah. That's he's right, explaining right, it right. to Paxton's, uh, Paxton's new wife. Yeah. And he's like, there's an area called the Suck Zone. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot about Welcome that. Welcome to the Suck Zone. Yeah, Twister 2, the Suck Zone. And then they use a, Perfect. Bun- and they use a bunch of uh, like empty Pepsi cans. And we bring Jan DeBont back to direct it. Yeah. No. Oh, well. Who is directing so, oh, uh, 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 Lee, Lee Isaac Chung from Minari. 
Oh. The guy that directed Minari. <laughs> oh yeah, that, we did. We did. <laughs> yeah, did a story yeah, about it. We did a story about that. Yeah. So yeah, I, so it reinvigorated my excitement for a new Twister. Because cool. I mean, it could it could be good. I mean, yeah. or it could be just as bad as what was that Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> and Dennis Quaid film? Oh, uh, uh, Day After Tomorrow. Day After Tomorrow. That's no, right. Yeah. Like because that movie is so bad, it's good. <laughs> So this could be the same thing. Who knows? Heather says on her T-shirt she's making for you, Tyler, put that away. It's going on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Tyler, put that away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, that's, that's that was the only news story I saw of interest. Oh, okay. My turn then. Yeah, My turn. Joseph. So Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder are teaming up once again for an A24 Nathan Fielder directed chess movie called Checkmate. Chess? Chess movie. It's called, called Checkmate? It's called Checkmate. That's a good title. All right. I like Is that. It? Do you think they, <laughs> you think they ever rub each other? <clears throat> well, rub if, each other? If you watch yeah. The Curse, they do some rubbing. Oh. Yeah. I'm, they So they have, yes. Not too much of a spoiler alert, but in The Curse... Uh, I just meant in their personal Nathan lives. Nathan Fielder's but... character is a cuck. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's implied heavily that he's a cuck. Mm-hmm. And there's some very uncomfortable scenes. <laughs> <laughs> very uncomfortable scenes of, of a sexual nature. So okay. Emma Stone's been on like a producing streak recently with yeah. Poor Things being the biggest thing that she's produced and she produced The Curse. Most recently I saw the TV Glow as well as Problemista and then she produced... Yeah, uh, Problemista too, huh? She produced Maniac, that TV show on Netflix, Cruella as well. And then she's also producing... Your Ghost Not the Most Next Project, starring her as well, called Begonia. Oh, I heard about that one. Uh, Cruella 2, she's producing. They're uh, making a sequel? I guess so. And then two other projects. One's titled a TV show called Phantasmus and uh, another movie called Little White Corvette. I don't know if she's producing... That's it, what it, I named my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Little White Corvette. I was going to say it's an after name for a wang. Oh, <laughs> 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 Little Red Corvette is well. The Prince song is supposed to be uh, uh, talking about a vagina. Mm, so oh. fitting. Yeah, good, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Did uh, you know I, that, Tyler? Before I said that, I no, I did not. Oh wow! I'm surprised she didn't. She didn't produce uh, kinds of kindness. Yeah. <clears throat> she didn't have time. I guess not. It's too fast. Too yeah. much producing. She has, I just, she has a lot of work. I just produced this. So this next project, directed by Nathan Fielder, about a, a real life chess scandal story, hmm. written by the same guy Ben Mesrich, 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 who whose works were adapted into The Social Network and most recently Dumb Money. And the story is going to center on what has been described as the biggest scandal in the history of chess. And what's that scandal? Following the controversial 2022, very recent, head-to-head match between Grandmasters Magnus Carlsen, then world champion, then world champion Magnus Carlsen, and Hans Hans Niemann, during which the latter was accused of cheating. Is this the one where... How do you cheat in chess? I think this is the one where supposedly he had like a butt plug in with a vibration, (laughs) like a a vibration on it. I'm not joking. This was the oh, this really? was, was and it would make sense that Nathan Fielder would do something that, ridiculous. It would that would make sense. It, it's like it had a certain like Morse code in vibrations. Oh my god! And it would like uh, tell him where the moves were or some shit like that. Yeah. How does that translate? How do you even come up with that? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I'm excited now. They're just like, they're <laughs> like yeah. look, uh, you're gonna have to put a butt plug in. <laughs> done and done. His coach. Yeah, this coach. This yeah. is a, a real Itania situation. He's like, <laughs> coach, I got, I got great news for you. I'm already one step ahead of you. <laughs> you won't believe this. Oh, we, yeah. Yeah. What a coincidence. I got one in right now. <laughs> After a competitive situation in which multiple studios and streamers showed interest in this project, A24 ultimately nabbed the rights, nabbed the rights thanks to a reported seven-figure offer. Jeez. Wow. Cool. So... The deals are still in the works, but Fielder is currently attached to direct with Emma Stone on board to produce with her husband and partner, Dave McCrary, under their... Fl- oh, she's married. Yes. And they have... A sad day for Tyler. And they have a Dang kid. It. Or kids. Kid or kids. They have kids? A kid or kids. And uh, they have their production studio or their producing firm, whatever, is called Fruit Tree. That's the name of their... Mm. The new movie builds on Stone, Fielder, and A24's successful co- collaboration after The Curse... Uh, a very dark dramedy. Apparently, I wanna. I have not yet. I have yet to see it. It's it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> the project would also be the latest chess move for Stone's Fruit Tree, which recently set up an untitled film at Universal, starring the two-time Oscar winner and directed by McCrary, her husband. Hmm. So yeah, she's uh, busier than ever. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm, I, a fan, I'm a fan. I love her. She's very charismatic. She's sharp. Yeah. She puts her name on good things. Yeah. I mean, and I, poor things. <laughs> uh, Bird, <laughs> I, 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 I actually recently watched a clip of her in Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we watched Birdman for the show. No, I know, but I, I, I'm saying like recently I saw a clip from Birdman where he w- where she was talking down on Michael Keaton's character, like saying like he was nothing. Yeah. Like I love that scene so much. She's good. Yeah, she's yeah. sharp. Crazy. She's great in, uh, what's it called? Crazy Stupid Love? Oh, yeah. The she's, one? Crazy she's Stupid Love. Yeah. Ron Gosling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just watched EZA this last week. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. wow. That's our early work. And like to think, I saw that movie back when it came out. In yeah. 2010, mm-hmm. no, 20, yeah, 2010. Yeah, 2010. And to think like where she started from there and now she's like producing and starring in these. Yeah, like she's a big player expand, in Hollywood. Expanding her, her movie genre yeah. acting skills is cool to see. Joe Bridges says that the executive producing, executive producing to get those assets for life, that's how Brad Pitt and George Clooney made their absurd amounts of money. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's surprising every once in a while I'll be watching a movie and you just see Brad Pitt EP pop up. Yeah. Like, wow, he has something to do with this movie too, huh? Yeah. I think he just spots good potential. Yeah. Throws in $500,000 into the movie, reaps the money. Yeah. Yeah. If it's successful. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but so yeah, that's all I have for news stories. I'm thinking there's anything else. I feel like there was, but I guess it's not that important. Okay. <laughs> Extreme pick time. <laughs> Movies. You wanna watch a movie? Yes, yes, I do. Disney Plus, oh, HBO Max. If I don't get the pick, show's over. I have grown accustomed to Hulu Plus. Amazon Prime. I like Netflix. You found the pick! Stream picks. Movies that we watched on our streaming services that you can watch or not watch if we don't recommend them as well. Pete. Yes. What do you have to stream pick? Well, I'm, I, got, I got a few. First of all, actually, yeah. before that. Before yeah, that. yeah. I already know what's going. What, what's going? I, I, I mean. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I paid my dues. Yep. I watched yeah. Clovich Killer. Yeah. <coughs> I'll get to it. My review when it comes mm-hmm. to me, but mm-hmm. I watched it the day that we recorded. Yeah, Joseph sent it to the group chat. And then, yeah. can you yeah. set up what your what the setup was? Oh yeah, last week we were disparaging Tyler. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you sure that last like was on this week? Was like, no, week like, like normal. <laughs> Um, about his just like move, oh, movies that he doesn't watch that we recommend, but he'll watch. He'll watch the Clovich Killer, who was recommended to him by which, this mysterious friend. Yeah, that <laughs> my dear AI friend. Yes, you bastard. Uh, <laughs> I knew uh, that would get you. I hate you. <laughs> Chatbot's very passionate and about AI. I issued a challenge yeah. for him to yeah. at, watch at least one of our stream picks every week, yeah. and then to make it fair i'll watch whatever he stream picks if i haven't seen it already and i agreed i said anything that you've stream picked that right. i haven't seen i will watch too mm-hmm. okay and uh, we'll get to whatever you watched <laughs> i'm sure probably what what'd you stream and pick last week joseph mine last week yeah let's see let me hop on the uh, i don't remember the old internet and see here i stream picked a documentary no i didn't the rental the rental yes run yes 10 things i hate about you yes and i think that's it my streaming picks were madam web atlas and unfrosted in Fantasy Island, mm. in the first Omen of Black Dynamite. Joe mm. Tyler's was the Clovis Killer. Yes. Okay. So this week, one you got like five options. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna spoiler. No, I didn't watch any of them. So why am I wasting my time? Look, when I was <laughs> when I was driving over here, I had I had the I had the shame sweats because I knew this was going to come. Up. Are you sure it was the, like, the shame shirts? <laughs> well, that too, but um, I, had to, I had to go to the local AMPM and <laughs> and uh, quickly change. That's why I was a little bit late today. Oh God! Uh, no, you know I do feel bad about it, but I yeah, I do feel bad. But I just don't care. I just, no, want, it, I just don't want to put the effort in. No, I do care. I do care. It's just uh, how often do you think about this show? Every day. But, but what do you? What do you? Besides, uh, let me put it this way: how, how often do you think about the show in terms of a producer, not mm-hmm. a active listener? Every day, thirty minutes before the movie, before the show starts. That's not true. No, <laughs> I always... the morning of when you have, force yourself to watch the movie. <laughs> You spend as little <laughs> amount of time per week producing for the show. Look, I had a tough, I had a tough week, and I do my, feel my, bad. My, my week was super I, easy. I, I, I am promising you that I will <clears throat> do it next week. However, I'm gonna put it on a challenge on myself. I'm gonna watch 
two of the streaming picks. Each of each, one of each of ours. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm gonna do if that. If you couldn't do the one, why are you forcing yourself to do two? Well, why because, are you setting yourself up for failure? I'm not setting up myself for failure. I'm giving <laughs> myself. I'm giving myself a hard a challenge. No, I wouldn't <laughs> challenge. I've already issued the challenge. Yeah. Well, I'm good. <laughs> well, forget your challenge. I'm, I'm doing my own challenge. Okay. <laughs> I under, Which is exactly so, the same look, as your challenge. Look, 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 look. Like I under, I understand the frustration <laughs> and the disappointment. I understand that it's not lost on me. Uh, and again, I came over here with my tail in between my legs because I knew I didn't do it. So I mean, I, that's all well and good, but do better. It, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I acknowledge that I failed mm-hmm. and I, I'm doing actively nothing to make. And that that's better. why I'm going to make it up. <laughs> OK, all right. We'll find out next week. You okay. will. Joel, first off, Joel says he's not going to stand for this day after tomorrow slander. He says he loves the day after tomorrow. I do Actually, too. he says he liked it. Um, oh, he's in love with it. Oh man! And Joe Bridges says he'll fly out every week if he wants, so he could take your place. He says I have sixteen shorts and two features from Jim Henson's streaming pick for the week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Joe. Fantastic. Yeah, get your job, get your work to do do like a write off. Be great. Yeah. Ugh. Hey, I'm gonna be in Portugal at the end of the week, uh, end of the month, end of this month, end of this month. Yeah, we okay. have to figure out what we're gonna do in that. This will be the first official episode that I've missed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna be gone next week. What? Is it next week? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, then what's... what's Joe, like? come, fly out. Fly out, Joe. You take Joe's place. <laughs> <laughs> Joe for Joe. Okay, so I'll get to my streaming picks then. Okay. I'm going to go again, worst to first. Worst to best. Okay. This week. Worst to best. Worst to best. First movie. This is called No Way Up. This is a shark movie. Mm-hmm. The, the plot is pretty simple. Characters from different backgrounds are thrown together when the plane that they're traveling on crashes into the Pacific Ocean. A nightmare fight for for survival ensues with the air supply running out and dangers creeping in from all sides. So this is, this has Cole Meany is in it. He's the top uh, rated or top like build person. Meany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's, you would recognize him. He's been a lot of stuff. He's uh, in The Rock. He's uh, John Cusack's boss with a nice car that he fucks up. Mm. Um, Not The Rock. Con Air. I'm sorry. Um. And Phyllis Logan, Sophie Mc, uh, McIntosh, Will Attenborough, which is Richard Attenborough's uh, uh, grandson. Jeremiah Amore, Manuel Pacific, a bunch of people that I haven't recognized, but it's kind of a low budget, eh, kind of crappy shark movie. Mm. But this is still much, much better than most crappy shark movies that you when get did they nowadays. Come out? This year, I believe. Oh, this year. Yeah, okay. 2024. And it's streaming right now on AMC Plus. That's where we watched it. And it's pretty good. I mean, basically, it's all set on the interior of a plane. Plane crashes, his nose down like the Titanic, and then the, the, at one point, the nose breaks off, and they're caught in this air bubble in the back of the plane. Mm. And it's the main girl and her friend and her, and she's like the daughter of a senator or some shit, so they have people that are going to go find them because the plane crashes. And, mm-hmm. and it, there's a fair amount of shark kills in this shark movie, so it, it works. Okay. Uh, but it does take a little while to get there because... They have to set up the characters, they all have to get on a plane together, and then the plane has to crash, and then all of a sudden there's sharks. Yeah. So, so there's a little bit of a delay at the beginning, but once the shark kills start going, they're pretty good, and they're pretty brutal too. So I like that one well enough, eh, probably two and a half stars maybe, where most like crappy shark movies are like star and a half maybe. Yeah. Some of the ones that came out last year were oof, really bad. Not so, a good movie for, not a good year for shark movies. <laughs> <laughs> last year, no. Yeah. This year we got more. So mm-hmm. No Way Up is one. The next one is streaming on Netflix right now, Under Paris, which you watch too, Joseph, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you jump in on, with me on this one. So I think that this one is a lot of fun. This is, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a, a really crappy CGI shark movie that is... Oh, wait, this is another shark another movie? Another shark movie, yeah. Under Paris? <laughs> Under <laughs> Paris. <laughs> the plot of Under Paris. In the summer of 2024, Paris is hosting the World Triathlon Championships on the Seine for the first time. Sophia, a brilliant scientist, learns from Mika, a young environmental activist, that a large shark is swimming deep in the river. (laughs) To avoid a bloodbath at the heart of the city, they have no choice but to join forces with Adil, the Seine River uh, police commander. So, the, the long and short of it is that the very beginning of the movie, it's paced really well because the beginning of the movie they show these research scientists out of the trash mm-hmm. island in the middle of the Pacific or whatever. Yeah. 
I guess it might Atlantic. Be, I might be the Atlantic, yeah. Yeah. And and they're out the trash pile and they're they're filming sharks and one of the sharks turns out to be this giant monstrous shark and they're like, well, how did she get so big? We've been tracking her and two months ago she was half the size. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And you find out later why. But uh, there's a massacre there. Wow. Um, almost no one left but the main character woman, this research scientist. Mm-hmm. And then flash forward an unknown number of years and she's in Paris and they have the beacon from their research that pops up and they're like, there's no way that's Lilith. The shark's name is Lilith. Oh, <clears throat> fitting. There's no way it's Lilith. Fitting. And uh, why, is, why is that fitting? Well, because Lilith is the, that it's a significant name in biblical history. Yeah. Yeah, but what is, what is but it? I don't see the connection. What is the connection though? Because she's a killer. Is Lilith a killer in the Bible? Yeah. Who'd she kill? I, I mean, I don't know. I like, think she I just, was killed. No, she, it, she, she, she's just basically like an evil person. Is she? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Mary Magdalene is Lilith. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, she. This is not. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. We're not right? bibliophiles here. Yeah. Why don't you stop talking for a while? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyways, flash forward, they're now in modern day and they're getting ready to do a triathlon. I mean, if you might imagine, if you know how triathlons work, it's a run, it's a bike, and it's a swim. Right. And they're starting with the swim on this one. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's how they all start or not. I'm, I'm not familiar with triathlons, but. They're all getting ready to release all these swimmers into this giant river that mm-hmm. runs right through the middle of Paris. And days before that, they find out that this shark is being, it's almost like infested that spider movie where mm-hmm. the, they have babies really fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like within weeks, they're having more yeah. babies. And there's, I'm not going to get into too much of the spoilers because there's some fun reveals, <laughs> but there was one shark. Now there's more sharks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in my opinion, this is a pretty fun, a pretty fucking fun shark movie. Okay. Not as good as Petite Blue Sea. I think a, maybe on par with maybe slightly less fun than The Meg. Definitely less polished than The Meg. You know, the CGI cracks are showing a little bit for the lower budget nature of it. Right. But for, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, mm-hmm. none of it made, none of it took me out of it and was like, oh, that was really lame. It was like, there's no shortage of kills. There's a lot number of people ripped in half. There's a lot of people losing limbs. <laughs> and the whole thing, the funny thing about this is all you have to do is don't go in the water. Right. Mm. Just don't go in the water. That's all you have and, to do. And, ev- and there's people that are have to be in the water for the triathlon. Yeah. But then there's these activists that are just falling into the water fucking constantly. <laughs> yeah, there's a they're lot. Constantly, they're constantly <laughs> slipping and falling in the water. Oh, God. <laughs> there's a homeless guy with this dog that just... He was on land, and then the next second he's dead, and they're like, how did he die? Oh, he's been in half. He's been what if, why, why did he go in the river? Yeah. And then, yeah. So what do, you, what do you think? That, I will agree. This was probably, like, one of the best shark movies in terms of, like, entertainment value yeah. since Deep Blue Sea. I agree with that. Like, oh. it, was, I, it was shocking in moments. It, I, there were moments where I found myself going, holy shit. I know. <laughs> I, I screamed out loud a number of times. And I was like, oh, God. And the kills, there are a, like, there's one kill in particular that is very, very, very much reminded me of Sam Jackson's death in yep. Deep Blue Sea. I was like, I was like, wait, I, I was expecting it, but it still surprised me. Yeah. Because like, there's like, there's like a build up to it. And it's like the first major like massacre of the movie. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's gnarly. It's, it's produced well, and it that like there's a little bit of I guess cheapness to it in terms of like CGI quality. But for the most part, they do a good job. There's like these cool slow motion sequences they do a couple times. One in the very beginning, and when she's like, she's almost like dragged down with oh, the yeah. shark mm-hmm. in the very beginning, and she, you see her ears pop and yeah, she's like pressure burst, and mm-hmm. it's like how she, how is she gonna get back up in time to not drown? Mm-hmm. And there's this really Almost like kind of Snyder esque slow mo shot of her like jump like breaching out of the water. Mm. That's really well done. And then there's another one later in the movie with like, the swimmers in the triathlon. But yeah, it was it was very entertaining, <clears throat> and I didn't expect to be enjoy it that much. Me neither. Especially because I also watched No Way Up, and that was very not good. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably a little more generous on it. I gave it two and a half stars, probably just because of the bias for how how bad the other shark movies are. Some of those shark yeah. movies are like one star, half yeah, star yeah. movies. Yeah. But this is a three and a half star movie. It was, it was super fun. I, with a heart, I really, it was a fun time. It was a, it was a fun movie to watch. 
And uh, camera movements were better than you sh- than they needed to be too, I think. I was like, but by the end of it, I don't want to give anything away, but the end, I was like, I, I don't, what? it didn't make any sense to be honest. Well, I was like, what? It, a shark did this? <laughs> <laughs> Sharks well, did, did I, this? I just don't understand where the water came from. That's what I thought I'm too. like, there's enough water. What is that, ocean? Is that, it, they break it, a dam? <laughs> there's a new ocean. They unleashed a new ocean under the water. It, was, I just, yeah. it made no sense. But I still, it, I, it like set it up for under Paris too. No, under 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 Venice. Under Venice. It's, yeah, it's gonna be under Tokyo <laughs> because it was uh, the way it ends. It's just like, oh, that's kind of bleak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it makes you think like, there's gonna be a direct continuation of this movie. Yeah, but then it's like, no, that's it for now at least. But yeah, it was. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it, it was. It was a lot of fun. I think this is this is an easy recommend to just about anybody. Yeah. And I actually have a review from the Maple Syrup Dawn from Saskatchewan, listener oh, Stephen. Okay. He says, Lay boys. So I watched Under the Paris. I'm deathly afraid of sharks, so I truly enjoy torturing myself with these kind of movies. Mm. One jump scare had me jump about a foot off the couch from a sitting position, yelling and swearing. I've never, never been that scared in my life from a jump scare ever. <laughs> <laughs> my parents had a real good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, the movie was fun, and if it happened... And if it happened, it would be the scariest thing ever. And I would have to move to the mountains somewhere as high as I could to get away from anybody, any body of water. Mm -hmm. The acting was solid. The plot was cool and engaging enough. The effects were a bit wonky at times, but it managed to keep a steady line of tension with when dealing with any of the water scenes. The characters kind of sucked and I was rooting for the sharks most of the time. (laughs) I agree. The humans were a bit fucking dumb, actually. Yeah. Besides that, the only real nitpicks are the overuse of the diving, the diver facing the screen and the murky backdrop where the shark might be. It was done probably like five times, a little too much. And the constant yelling, adil, adil, adil. <laughs> uh, P.S. Oh, this is in French too, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, since he's French Canadian, he says, Quebec French isn't nice as Parisian or French in general in Canada. Quebecian is something else. Que- que- no, que- Quebecois. 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 Is something else. Sounds so romantic. Three out of five, the maple syrup dawn. Oh. Yeah. I give it a little higher. I give it about a three and a half, but yeah. Yeah. It, it could easily be a two and a half or a three or mm-hmm. a three and a half. But as the boys on cinematics like to say, this is a three star banger. <laughs> you know what you're getting yourself into for this type of movie. It's as bad as good as you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. So three star banger for Under Paris for about three and a half stars. Yeah. Next best one Book of Clarence. Oh, yeah, and Under Paris is streaming on Netflix. Tyler, I'm going to have to take that pen away from you. I'm not going to pick it up. Last week, the same exact thing happened. I'm not going to pick it up. <laughs> I already, I, I already, I already. I've been watching you spin that thing the whole time, just waiting for you to stop. Yeah. Do you want me to get you a snack? No, it's okay. okay. Actually, I would like a snack. But... Okay, well, we have a break coming you want up a soon. a snack? <laughs> some orange slices? Yeah, so Under Paris is streaming on Netflix. Also streaming on Netflix, The Book of Clarence. And this is a, a, a really fun one that uh, I've been looking to for a while. Um, it's directed by, what's his name? Is it James Samuels? Yeah, James Samuel. He's the director, writer, director of Heart of the Fall, which is so fucking good. I love the Heart of the Fall. Wait a minute, Pete. I, I'm looking at the chat right now. Jo- Shinneman says Tyler's planning to do better, and you said no? <laughs> Yeah. How dare you? Um, well, he's planning on it, whether he will or not. That's a different story. So, yeah, so Book of Clarence. This is a, a kind of a reimagining of a biblical tale. Mm. Have you guys seen The Harder They Fall? No. Harder They Fall, that's... It's a, a Western. It's like a basically a black-led Western movie. You know, I've, heard, I've heard of it before, but I don't... It's I don't, on Netflix. Regina King, Lakeith Stanfield. It sounds familiar, but I don't. I can't say. Io Edabiri, R.J. Seiler. Isn't Idris Elba in it? Idris Elba, yeah. Mm. Um, and a lot of the same people are in this movie. Mm. And same writer-director. And the James Samuels, Jam, Samuel also did the music for Book of Clarence. Oh. I don't know if he did the music for Heart of the Fall, but I fucking loved Heart of the Fall. This is not quite as good. It is interesting, though. So... The idea is Clarence or Clance is a living on the streets of Jerusalem and he's a kind of streetwise sort of kind of a Mm ne'er-do-well, doesn't believe in God. Jesus is a character in the movie. He's like running around with his apostles and Clarence's twin brother is one of the apostles. Mm. And so he's constantly talking with his brother about, you know, I can't believe you believe this shit. He says he's the son of God. I don't even believe in a God. How can you believe in this stuff? Blah, blah, blah. And 
he believes that Jesus is doing tricks. Mary Magdalene is there. Joseph is there. He, at one point, he decides he owes a bunch of money to uh, basically like a job of the hut type character, like a bad, a bad, mm-hmm. a bad dude in town that yeah. everybody knows. Mm-hmm. And he says, if you don't pay me in 30 days, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill your friend. So he decides to make money. He's going to become a prophet himself. Mm. And he's like, Jesus does it. How could, it couldn't be that hard. <laughs> right. So he starts prophesizing and he starts doing miracles, tricks, what he calls them. Yeah. And the cool thing is about it is he's, he's clearly faking it, but then he does some things that are very heroic. Like he frees one of the slaves. There's mm. a guy that has a bunch of slaves and fights them like gladiators. Yeah. And he frees one of the slaves and he does it a hundred percent off of his balls and his, you know, gumption. Mm. Yeah. No tricks, no nothing. He just does it. Yeah. And people are like, wow, he freed the slaves. Oh, wow, he did it. And, and then the next scene, he's faking a resurrection with one of his friends. Oh. And then everybody gives him, <laughs> gives him all these shekels. And he's able to pay off his debt, but he decides to just keep being a prophet, mm, you know? Mm. Double down. Yeah. And then, what's his name? James McAvoy is Pontius Pilate in this. <laughs> and, he's, and he rounds up all these false, these people that call themselves prophets. And all of a sudden now Clarence doesn't want to be a prophet because he gets rounded up with Jesus. And it's really, really interesting. It's really interesting. That is, it's an interesting plot point where he had, it's a twin brother (laughs) that's following Jesus. And the the uh, twin part doesn't really factor in it too much. Oh, really? No. His brother is one of the disciples. Yeah. At some point he asked him, can I be your 13th disciple or apostle or whatever? And he's like, no, we're not going to do that because we know you don't believe. <laughs> so he just like, well, you know, fuck this. I'm going to go make my own religion. You it's, know? So, it's so interesting to think about like uh, Jesus as a figure in he was our modern. Figure. He was a real person. Yeah, I, I understand that. I wasn't saying he wasn't. I'm mm. just saying in a modern setting, you would see someone saying, oh, I'm Jesus. And <laughs> no one, no one would give a good goddamn. Like they'd be like, yeah, yeah, fuck you. Well, you think that, but people follow, get led oh, into cults. Oh, that's a Jew. <laughs> people, <laughs> people get led into cults all the time. That's true. People want to believe I actually, in deli- I, I delivered a package to a cult before. Oh, cool. How yeah. do you know? Oh, yeah. You can, you can tell. <laughs> you were like Hank Hill pulling up. Is this the cult? Was it a, was it a tent? Was it a... Was it, was it, like, it was like a compound. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was very They're all wearing like very similar clothing. People want to believe in something. That's why the Juggalos mm. exist. So, but, oh, <laughs> that's how we got Juggalos. Yes. Yeah. So, Book of Clarence, I recommend it. I, again, not the not the greatest. It's like almost a four star movie, but not quite. Mm. I think I might go up on a rewatch. But Benedict Cumberbatch has a really small part in it, and he's his arc is really interesting and fucking hilarious. Does he play Judas? I cannot say. I knew it. I cannot say. He does. No, there's Black Judas in this. There's a Black Judas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, almost like 95 percent of the cast is black in this. Oh, interesting. It's a, it's a great reimagining, you know, of yeah. the whole thing. And it's it's really, really fun. So I would strongly recommend watching the Book of Clarence. Whether or not you have a religious background or not, if you do, I think you would have an interesting, like, perspective on it all. Yeah. But... Is it blasphemous? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the thing is about it is that Jesus, the real Jesus in, in the movie, is mm-hmm. doing legitimate miracles the whole time. So it's almost like... Oh, he's, he's doing magic. He's... No, but he's doing real miracles, but Clarence says they're tricks. Uh, and when he goes to learn from Mary Magdalene or Mother Mary how her son does these tricks, she's like, they're not tricks. Is he's Lilith got- involved? Mary is, his, <laughs> Mary is Jesus's lover. Well, Mother, Virgin Mary, not yeah. Mother Mary Magdalene. I'm oh. sorry. He got with a woman who's the same name as his mom? That is mm, a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> if I started dating a girl named Laura, I'd be like... <laughs> Or Jessica, my sister's name. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they do comment on the Immaculate Conception, though, and they give a, a, oh. a they give a like a reason behind it. Oh, okay. So it's kind of interesting. Joseph, what 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 happened? Uh, no, <laughs> he's. They basically say, virgin is the translation error. Essentially, mm. they're like, what pe- what you call a virgin is not what I call a virgin. Oh, you know? I see. I see. I'm okay. not saying I'm not saying that I had never had sex before, but we just we just weren't married when it happened. Mm. You know, so, so it doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, and then The Heart of They Fall is also on Netflix. I talked about that on the show already a long time ago. I rewatched it again after that. I got the itch as soon mm-hmm. as I finished Book of Clarence. Oh, it's so fucking good. One of the coolest movies in the last 10 years. Mm, coolest. So cool. It's, like, it's badass. Mm. Of all the recommendations, I don't know, and the next one's really good. I would almost say, Tyler, you should probably watch The Heart of They Fall. <clears throat> but my real 
top streaming pick for the week is American Fiction, which just hit Amazon Prime. Mm, mm-hmm. And this is this is starring Jeffrey Wright. He's the he's another fantastic actor who's just a chameleon. He plays in he's he pops up all over the place. He's in the James Bond franchise. He played Basquiat a long time ago in the Basquiat movie. He's in he, Last of Us Two. Is he really? Yeah. He's like the leader of the uh, whatever Abby's part of the Wolves. Oh. Oh, interesting. I didn't that, know that was that's him. him. He's <clears throat> reprising his role. For the show? For Last of Us two, Season 2. No shit. No. He's in the Batman. He's Commissioner Gordon. Oh, yeah. The Batman's Batman. Asteroid City. Oh, The okay. Hunger Games series from, from 2 on. He's in Game Night. Casino Royale. French Dispatch. He, in, he just recently got into uh, Wes Anderson's sort of uh, circle of friends or whatever. His mm-hmm. current roster. Yeah, his current roster. <laughs> but this also has John Ortiz in it, Erica Alexander, Leslie Ugams. Sterling K. Brown, John Ailes, Patrick Fischler, a lot of people you'd recognize, and everybody's firing on all cylinders. This movie is so fucking well acted. Mm-hmm. It is so well written. And this is it won an Academy Award, right? I think so. I'm not or sure. Or adapted screenplay or something. Let's see. Because no, it nominated for a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I had I know it had a couple of nominations. Let's see here. <clears throat> do 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 awards, awards. It did one one Oscar. It did one one. It, it sure. won one. It did win one. <laughs> so here's here's the uh, synopsis from Just Watch. Thel- Thelonious Monk Ellison writing what his, name. his writing career stalled because his work wasn't deemed black enough. Monk, a writer and English professor, writes a satirical novel under a pseudonym, aiming to expose the publishing world's hypocrisies. The book immediately the book book's immediate success forces him to get deeper enmeshed in his assumed identity. And challenges his closely held worldviews. Mm. So basically, he's a very highfalutin, very intelligent author, mm-hmm. and he he doesn't write about the black experience. He just writes a novel, not from the perspective of, of a black author, just from an author. Yeah, and he feels it pandering it to basically say, "Oh, I'm a black author, so I have to write about black things." Right. That's basically the emphasis of his character. He's uh, also like a professor or something like that, and. One of his compatriots, one of his uh, contemporaries, releases a book that's basically written in Ebonics. It's, mm, it's, mm-hmm. it's called like, We's Got the Struggles or oh, something like that. Geez. And the whole thing, like, oh, and, it, and she's a, a, an accomplished, very well spoken, very intelligent young black author. author mm-hmm. And she's, he, he's at a conference, with this literary conference, and he, she's the main stage. And he walks in on her re- doing a reading of her book. And she goes from this very intelligent speech to, and like, very well spoken to, like, basically gutter slang. Yeah. And oh. and almost like borderline like slave era, you know, mammy sort of s- stuff, you know. Sure. And it's like very pandering and very and it, the way it's written it's just like it's designed for white guiltists to eat it up. And so mm. is it is it like he's offended by that? Yes. Yeah. He's like, "Why is she getting all this appraise uh, acclaim for this when my books are well written and well thought out and well researched and they're very interesting?" Mm. And uh, there's like one scene when he goes to the bookstore and he look he asks for books by him. Mm-hmm. He says, "Is there any uh, Thelonious uh, Ellison, you know, books?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, sure, right over here." And he leads him to like the Black Voices section, and he goes, "Why are they here? Why are in this section?" Yeah, they're not. This isn't a black book just because I'm a black author. Mm. And the guy goes, "Oh, you wrote these? Oh, very nice to meet I'm you." Like, yeah, yeah, I did. And then he's, "I'm going to move them. I'm going to move them to this section." And the guy's, like, "This is a corporation. I don't." make a decision on how where they go mm-hmm. sir that's a really interesting concept <clears throat> it, it, it's very interesting and it and it it there's a whole like personal life that, uh, growth that happens mm-hmm. and there's some trauma that happens in his life very early on in the movie and he's kind of forced to and he basically at some point out of desperation he does almost like a fuck you to the system and he writes this book called what's it called it's called my. F- oh, I can't remember Live the name of it now. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Live in the Now. Let's see, American fiction book title. I can't remember it now, but it's like a. But he, anyways, he, he he makes this a book that's very similar to this other woman's style of writing. Mm-hmm. You know, dumbs it down, talks in this like very, you know, quote unquote non educated black speak, so on and so forth, and like, he writes like about the stereotype, the, the stereotype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's all about how. You know, this guy is meeting his father and he has to shoot his father and kill him. And he yeah. lives on the streets and he has this, he writes it under a pseudonym and he makes his publisher send it in. And basically he's, I don't want to write, I don't want to submit this. Mm. And he's like, just do it. 
it's a fuck you to the system and everybody fucking loves it. It blows up. Oh, it becomes God. it becomes like the top best selling book yeah. or whatever. So since he's famous now, he needs to appear on these talk shows or whatever and talk to publishers as this pseudonym. And they just get deeper and deeper. They're like, oh, by the way, he's a fugitive. That's why he doesn't like to come in. Mm. You know, that's why you can't see, you can't, we want, we can't show your, your face or whatever. Oh, and okay. a- Adam Brody plays a, a Hollywood producer that wants to adapt the rights to the book before mm. the book has even been released. And it just gets wow. deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's, that sounds very compelling. That's the main story. But the majority of the story is him wrestling with his personal life. Mm. And he's got Sterling K. Brown as his brother who's recently has come out as gay because his wife walked in on him having an affair with a man and it blew up his whole life. Oh, jeez. Oh. And there's this whole thing, like this interesting corollary about denying who you are and being ashamed of who you are. Mm. And it's like the, the, the parallel between his brother's life and him writing this Fakakta book. Yeah. And it's really, really interesting. And it's, it's and he's a, wrote it just so that people would, he would, he would get money. No, he didn't even want it to be successful. When it, no, blew, when just, it blew up, he was pissed off that he's being, because he's like, all these books that I tried really hard on are getting nowhere. Mm. It's like, I can this do this. book I wrote so he, in one night. He like wrote it in spite. He, he yeah, wrote it in spite. Wrote in spite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he's getting millions for like movie deals and stuff. And he's, people are asking where he's getting all his money. And he's like, off, you know, yeah. <laughs> mind, mind your business. And it's a really, really interesting. And, and the ending, as it gets close to the end, I'm like, how is this going to end? Is he going to come clean? Is he going to do this? He's going to do that. And the way they do the ending is very, 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 very well done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is a streaming American fiction streaming on Amazon prime. They got all this buzz last year. It's on my like missed list of movies from 2023. And it's, it's it, all the buzz is well, well-deserved. No notes, damn near perfect movie. Fucking and love this it. is nice. this director's first movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. He's written a bunch of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, but this is his first directing. Cord Jefferson is his name. Yeah. He wrote yeah. for the Watchmen series, The Good Place, Master of None. Cool. And I love this. Some other stuff. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times like black cinema is like a blind spot for me, you know, um, and I feel like this, this is a really interesting perspective on it because it's a black voice talking about stereotypical black voices and yeah. Just the kind of deconstruction like, of that. Yeah, just like wrestling. Really, yeah, really, really interesting. So highly recommend that. Hard for me to say which one's better to watch. This or The Harder They Fall, because this is a better movie, but The Harder They Fall is a much more fun movie. Mm. And this is, uh, American fiction is hilarious as well. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's it. Tyler. Yes. Okay. What are you going to stream pick this week? Okay. Is this um, another recommendation from your other friend that you watched? Oh, my dear AI friend? No. Yes. A, I, okay, I just want to preface this before okay. I get into it. Right. Because I think what I'm about to recommend <laughs> okay. feels like Mind a comp. very... <laughs> no, that's a book. What I'm about to recommend feels like a short movie. Like, when I was watching it, it felt a short movie. Mm-hmm. So I watched the first episode of Fallout on Amazon Prime. Okay. And so the reason why I'm streaming picking this, I know it's not a movie, but it felt like a movie. And it felt like I, I haven't watched any of the other episodes, but after I watched the first episode, I was thinking <laughs> there's not really any need to continue. It, it was a really self-contained story. I thought it was really great. Are you saying you, after the first one you don't have a you're never going to watch the other ones? Well, I'm going to eventually. However, I'm so recommending streaming pick is one single episode of a show. Correct. But I mean, it's like, it's like an hour and 15 minutes long. So it feels like a movie. So if anyone isn't familiar with the Fallout video game series, it's about typically it's about a vault dweller going out into the wildlands of a post-apocalyptic. Why are they they living in a vault? Well, because there was a nuclear catastrophe that happened. Mm, a fallout on, of sorts. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very apprehensive about going into this show because... Even after thought, we stream picked it? After we both talked about it glowingly on the show and said it was a great adaptation, especially for fans? Uh, okay, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. <laughs> I don't know, I wasn't listening. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably true. I have, I have, I have a attention span of a goldfish. But yeah, I, I thought when I watched the first episode and I was apprehensive going into it because I was thinking to myself, and I know you guys glowingly reviewed it. Um, Do you know that? Yes. 
Do you know that before you, Joseph just said that? Yes. Okay. I did. Actually, no, I didn't. Use um, your brain! Use your brain! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I was apprehensive going into it, though, because I was thinking to myself, how can you adapt a game like Fallout and translate it into television? And, but I took the plunge. I was like, I, I took the I took the day off, and I was like, uh, <laughs> to watch one episode. <laughs> I took the day off to watch a single episode of this fucking show, and not neither of our stream picks. Well, I I was napping for most of the day, so yes, I was. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not debating that. I'm just ashamed of you. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So, but the reason why I'm streaming picking this is because this is the, what, after I watched the first episode. I was thinking to myself, man, like, I don't even, I feel like I don't even have to watch another episode. Like, I get, this is, this was just like a perfectly good self-contained, it's not a short film because it's over an hour, but it felt like a short film. And I thought the acting was really well done and the story was really well done as well. Like, it really kept you on your feet and especially towards the end with, who's that actor's name? Oh, McLaughlin? Yes. Yeah, Walton Goggins. Oh, Walton Goggins. Yeah, Walton. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> no, no, sorry, I misheard you. <laughs> Walton Goggins was just so incredible in this. Even though he only appears at, actually, no, he appears in the beginning and then he appears in the end. And I thought the beginning was really well done. The graphics and set design just felt very authentic. And the story of how the main girl Lucy getting out of the vault. Because if you are familiar with the Fallout games, you know someone's getting out of the vault. They're going into... (laughs) Someone's getting out of the vault. It's not going to be self-contained. It's not going to be... It's not going to be completely contained within one single vault. You already... Because if you play the games, you know someone's getting out. And they're going to go on an adventure. So... If you've ever played the Mario Brothers games, you know the game doesn't end at level one. One to one. The next one, guess what? One, two. Yeah, Bowser's getting thrown into uh, pits of flames. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I thought it was, I thought the cinematography was really great. There was, there, it was kind of it, the twist in the in the first episode was really well done as well. I think I, 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 was it the brother who finds out that that the, don't 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 do a twist. Don't give a twist. Why? Why? <clears throat> don't because you don't want to spoil the. the it's f- been out. Spin out. It doesn't matter. You can people can check it out. Yeah, they can. Don't, you don't, don't have to. Don't tell spoil them. it. All right. Well, fine. The twist was really well done. <laughs> I thought the arranged marriage scenario was kind of creepy, and how everyone was accepting of it. I think that might be the idea. Yeah, they have. They kind of have to do that down there. Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the idea and, is and then that also, it is and, creepy, and also mm-hmm. like the the whole like cousin fucking thing was <laughs> again that's how it's supposed to be uh, perceived yeah well it's I, I thought it was very well done and so that's streaming on Amazon Prime go check that out mm-hmm. uh, and I'm and that again all I'm saying is because the first episode felt like a movie that I didn't feel like I had to check out the second episode it doesn't but, leave but will it. you are you, are you going to watch more? He of it? has to take another day off <laughs> to watch this. <laughs> second. No, I, I, I am. No, I am going to check it out. It just, I was thinking to myself after it ended because it doesn't leave on a cliffhanger. Essentially, like it's not. <laughs> kind of does. Yeah, not really. It's a great. I mean, it is a great if, pilot. Okay. I mean, if you if you didn't have any other episodes proceeding after episode one, would you guys be satisfied with what you just saw? I mean. I would want more. Oh, huh. yeah. I I mean, for myself, if, I if like, you're really that satisfied, don't watch the rest of the series. Well, no, I mean because I know there's new episodes. So <laughs> like, I'm going to watch it, but I was thinking to myself after I after I watched it, I was thinking, I was like, you know what? If they didn't even have another single episode of this show, like I would have been okay with it. I would have been like, wow, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've it's not quite Fellowship of the Rings where you get to the end and you're like. I feel like I'm very satisfied Mm -hmm. that one movie in itself is self-contained, but you're, they didn't get to Mordor, you know, there's so much more. There's so much more of this, of the fallout story that you're, you're going to unlock. And it's a great series. I can't wait for you to finish it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's the only reason why streaming picked it because I just thought it was like like it could have been it, it could have been a movie like it just didn't. Also, use- there was nothing else you watched this week besides True Detective in the one episode in the one episode of Fallout. Yeah, correct. <laughs> uh, Heather says I'm taking a day off. An entire day off to watch one thing is an incredibly Tyler thing to do. <laughs> and you need to stop being jealous. Stop hating the player. Feel free to hate the game, though. Wait, um, what? <laughs> I, I do hate the game, but not the player. I love Tyler, but I just... I'm, it's, his life is an enigma. An it's enigma, not you that I hate. It's an the enigma. things that you do <laughs> and say. <laughs> <laughs> it's the choices you make on a weekly basis. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and which makes the the, the vessel that which makes those choices is fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I I feel like I did watch something else, but it's lost on me. <laughs> it's lost on me right now. Write um, it down. <clears throat> there's a there's an app that you have downloaded on your phone. I know. All right. Well, anyways, that's all I got. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, I already watched Fallout and the whole thing, so I'm not. I'm not gonna. I will have to go back and watch something else. You well, that's the great thing about this deal. Deal you made that is the stuff that. Tyler's gonna bring into the show for streaming picks. Mm-hmm. I watched. You uh, probably mostly seen them already. Fear and Loathing. I haven't seen that. You haven't. No. Okay, I haven't either. I'll watch that too. Yeah. I don't think it's streaming anywhere though. No, I think you have to rent it. No, wait. Didn't we reveal that it was streaming? And he was like, "Damn it!" No, that was no, that something was, else. No, it was. It was. Oh, fuck. What was that it? Was the movie you watched last week? Yeah. It was. What was the one? Your your streaming pick. My stream pick? Yeah, the one that you watched of Tyler. Oh, Clove Hitch. Clo- Clove Hitch Killer. Clove Hitch. Oh, he, that, yeah, He yeah, rented yeah, yeah. it, and it was on, like, five streaming it's, services. It's oh, I was like, God uh, damn it. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Yeah. Damn. Oh, no, it's on Netflix, actually. It's on, like, four of them. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Fear and Loathing, not streaming anywhere for free. Oh, okay. Well, I'll watch something else, then. I'll, I'll find something. <laughs> I'll go back to say six weeks' worth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My turn. Yeah. I'll go from worst to best as well. Oh, cool. The worst I watched, I watched Pete's streaming pick, oh, Madam, cool. Madam Web. Oh, fun. Yeah. This was not a good movie. And <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought that it was supposed to be a comedy <laughs> based on some of the writing and how some of the actors, specifically Dakota Johnson and how she was delivering the lines, because it felt like she was trying to be funny the whole time. Like, like. Like, clever, I'm, I'm, like clever. I'm cool yeah. type character. Yeah. There's this moment in the movie where she rescues the girls from her premonitions where they get killed on the, on the subway train. And she drives them out into the middle of the woods where there are no like cameras or way to track them. Because that's mm-hmm. how the villain is, is uh, finding them. Is like just they hack like the security camera throughout security cameras all throughout uh, Chicago or wherever they are. Um, yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't know if it's New York or Chicago. I think it is Chicago. Metropolis? No, it's New York. <laughs> it's New York because it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yes. Yeah. Spider-Man. And um, <laughs> there's a scene where she's, they're like all asking her a bunch of questions. And she's, her her line and the way she delivers it is, was comical because she's like, I don't know, a bunch of crazy shit's happening <laughs> and I have no idea what's going on. And it, it's. That's a pretty good Trump impression. Thank you. Um <laughs> And there's a, and that's like th- throughout the movie. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that throughout the movie, and it was uh, not nearly as fun as I thought it was gonna be. Maybe it's probably more fun in a group. It was just uh, me and Deanna watching it. Yeah, it was definitely like silly and ridiculous. And I will say that there was a little uh, some cool like editing tricks and like production stuff that they did throughout the movie, camera and editing tricks that were kind of cool. I was like, oh, that was not bad. And that was kind of cool. And because she's like wrestling with this power that where she's like seeing things that are happening like 10, like a few minutes from when they happen. And then she like relives them again. And she's like tripping out because like, didn't she tells the person like Adam Scott, her EMT friend, she imagines the conversation <clears throat> and then she, and then it happens again. And she's like, you just said that. Mm-hmm. Or like, you just took my readings or whatever. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of that throughout the movie but uh, yeah not a not a great not a great movie a weird villain a very strange villain i think not n- non-spider-man yeah like not spider-man and then i it took me a second even even after you mentioned it the the ben like uncle ben i i forgot until like after that birthday party scene mm. and i was like oh that's oh yeah i forgot about that it's ben parker oh uncle ben oh yeah. that's the nephew oh that's peter parker yeah and it's a, <laughs> and it's a young Ben. It's a yeah. young Uncle Ben, which we're <laughs> young Uncle ben. not used to seeing. Right before he started his uh, rice uh, yeah. em- empire. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uncle Ben's rise. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I can't really recommend it, but don't watch it on your own, I guess. I have no idea. Don't watch it. Just don't watch it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was fun enough to watch. Yeah. But yeah, that's streaming on Netflix. I give that like a one, <laughs> one and a half, I think. Yeah. Wow. The second, we kind of talked about No Way Up. That was the second worst thing I watched, that plain shark movie oh, yeah. in the water. But it's meh. Nah, not great. Yeah. Uh, the <coughs> the third best movie that I watched, Under Paris, we talked about that. Yeah. And that was really good. I strongly recommend that shark movie for sure. I uh, watched Easy A again for the first time in a while. Solid like teen comedy movie that uh, Emma Stone, Amanda Bynes. Um, oh yeah, she was in that. Pen Pen Badgley. Yeah, is the guy that plays uh, what's the name in you? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh oh yeah, uh, he plays Sandman. Joe, Joe the, yeah, uh, the Sandman. Th- Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, Thomas Hayden Church. Lisa uh, Kudrow. Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe yeah. from Friends. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> yeah, Lisa Kudrow. Stanley Tucci. As the, as the parents, yeah, yeah they, they're she has. I can't remember her name. The the mom's name, I can never remember. She has great parents. Yeah. The Stanley Tucci's fantastic. When when his her Emma Stone's younger brother, who is adopted, is this little black kid, and the Stanley Tucci's or the kid reveals that he was adopted, and Stanley mm-hmm. Tucci's reaction is like, "Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna do this together." I like also when he, he looks over at some point and goes. So where are you from? What's your story? <laughs> um, As his adopted father, it is. I like the story of of EZA and how it how it's not like about a teen romance story, even though that's like a subplot of the movie, but mm. not like the main storyline. <clears throat> where she still kind of ends up with the popular guy mm-hmm. uh, with Chuck Todd. And, uh, Chuck Todd. It's uh, yeah, really solid, funny movie that still kind of holds up. It's a little loosely based on Easy A or uh, Scarlet Letter. Yeah, Scarlet Letter, which is prominent throughout the movie. Malcolm McDowell is the principal. Yes, Malcolm McDowell. Fred Armisen is a pastor. What pastor? Yeah, he plays. I don't remember that part. The, the priest when she goes, Olive goes to see, talk to him about try to get his advice about something, hmm. and I then that scene. and the conversations. She's like, so hell exists, right? And then the priest, the, the the Catholic Church fully acknowledges the existence of hell. And then, <laughs> and then she's like, okay, for the sake of argument, let's say hell exists. And then he's like, it's there beneath us. Hell exists. <laughs> With a very, very deadpan look. Mm. And uh, Where's that streaming? That's on Netflix as well, I believe. Cool. I think it's been on Netflix forever. Netflix feels like. bringing in the hits. Mm-hmm. I rewatched Van Helsing, Hugh Jackman's oh, Van Helsing. Oh, movie. For the, in the, uh, I don't know, I can't remember the last time I watched this movie. Very fun. Very fun movie, kind of a, a good mashup of all of the classic horror creatures, Frankenstein, yeah. Dracula, and Wolfman, and uh, very entertaining, very entertaining. Maybe a little bit long, but... Yeah, it's a little long. But uh, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it a lot. And Hugh Jackman plays Van Helsing, and uh, what's her name from Underworld? Uh, Kate oh, Beckinsale. Yeah, Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale, yeah. Also playing in another movie with werewolves, <laughs> werewolves and vampires. Oh, shit. And his little helper friend... Um, what's his name? I don't know the actor's name, but he's been in, uh, he was in The Proposition. He was in, he's in 300. He's the guy who's telling the story. Oh. Yeah, I don't know the actor's name. I, I, I know his face, though. David yeah. Wenham. Yeah. He plays, like, the, his little helper who, like, helps him with his weapons and stuff. Yeah. He's, he's a, he's not a monk. He's a friar. Oh, interesting. Yeah. This is streaming on Hulu, released in 2004. I mean, the CG looks is better than EZA for you. Better? No, this is this is slightly worse. Oh, okay. So I went backwards. <laughs> a roller coaster for emotions, but it's still <laughs> very very fun. Very fun. I movie. like this a lot better than I thought I was going to. I saw it for the first time like two years ago. Yeah. Oh, Van Helsing, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I saw it. Oh my god, I, I saw it. I, I saw this in theaters. Oh, nice. Yeah, super fun. I like the flying succubus vampire girls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. And like that unlocks how, something in my mind. Frankenstein's. <laughs> Frankenstein is he's like the key to Dracula's demise mortality <laughs> okay or like he's like trying to become mortal or feel again and he's but also trying to like like in the like in under paris he just has a bunch of spawn oh a yeah. bunch of baby <laughs> vampires that he wants to hatch but, Hi, my little pretties but he needs frankenstein's body to be the conduit for the lightning and i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah um, it gets a little murky but uh, super fun cool and then um, 
the top movie of the week that I watched streaming on Netflix. It is The Clove Hitch Killer. Yeah. A movie that I watched because I said I would watch it. <laughs> okay, we don't need, the, we don't need the preamble on it. I said I yeah, would watch the, it. We don't need the preamble. We don't need the preamble. I gave it five, five stars. High, highest recommend possible. A minus. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> I gave it four and a half. Very good, though. Okay. Very, very good. Streaming on Netflix and Hulu. It was, it was very tense, mm-hmm. and it was like a Prisoner's Light. Mm. Very prisoners like. Interesting. I never thought. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Like a cheaper version of prisoners. Okay. Well, that, that, that's <laughs> Dollar General prisoners. Kirkland I signature. I don't know if I agree. And that's with that. more just in the production quality of the movie. But uh, very well done. There's like very little. I feel like there's very little music throughout the movie. Yeah. And the characters are good. The son, who is the main character, being doubtful or, or just suspicious mm-hmm. of. I guess of his father. That's like the main point throughout the whole movie. He, like, yeah. he I thinks- hated that the main character was named after me. Like, oh yeah. I, that, that really took me out of the movie sometimes. I know. Whenever someone's named Peter in a movie, I always get taken out too. Peter! <laughs> like, oh no. Like, yes. I'm possessed by payment. Peter! But uh, I don't want to reveal too much because there are some, there's a moment where it takes a turn mm-hmm. and where like he sends his family his, his like his wife away mm-hmm. and his son goes to like, some camp <coughs> and i was like what the fuck is happening right now <laughs> it was is it, it with the polaroids and the dancing or something yeah yeah, uh, yeah, that was, yeah that's fun <laughs> i was i was really like what? i was like because i was like still unsure is like, yeah. this guy just obsessed or like, yeah copycat or this would just, be just, i'm not kink shaming but yeah <laughs> And his little tantrum that he throws. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, but Heather says that she saw the Clovis Killer on DVD at the uh, FYE There's at the, the mall. They still have FYEs. I know. I never, I haven't seen one in F- her for a while. FYE. Yeah. yeah. For your entertainment. Just like a CD, CD um, movie, movie thought, entertainment store. Like Tower Records or I something. I thought it was, I thought it was called FYI. Oh, FYI. No, yeah. No, you're F-Y-E, right. Yeah, FYE, yeah. yeah. FYE. And I enjoyed the little kind of backtracking editing trick that they do mm. in the third act of the movie. Mm-hmm. It was like, it reminded me of like in Last of Us 2 when you're playing as Ellie and you go three days of the story and then you play as Abby and you go back to day one yeah. and to a meeting point mm-hmm. in the story. Very well done. Very well done movie. Saturday didn't watch it soon. It just came out in 2018. Um, it's a solid movie. Un- kind of under under the radar too. Uh, yeah, I don't know a lot of people seen it. I haven't seen many movies with <laughs> Dylan McDermott, but he was great in this. He pulled all pulled, pulled all the stops out and pulled it out. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. He pulled something out. Um, <laughs> Tyler, put that away. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the main the main Charlie Plummer is that the I think it's kid? Name, yeah. yeah, he did a good job of being kind of like a because he's like in a very religious town and a very religious family, and he's very. Boy Scout ish because mm-hmm. he is essentially a Boy Scout or an Eagle Scout or something. Yeah, yeah. and I, I liked the the reveals of the end because Deanna was on that fucking edge of her seat watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> she was like convulsing, like she was because there's a point in the movie where you're like, call the police. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drop right there. Call the police. Yeah, it was. It was good. It was. It was more fun to watch her. But the that the moments that when she was like that, it was very tense because I yeah. was like feeling that way inside. I just wasn't outwardly expressing as much as she was. Nice. I kept questioning myself throughout the whole film. I was like, where are they going? Where are they going with this? Yeah, yeah, they did like, a good job. It, yeah, and it's not like cam fisted too. Yeah. it's it's very subtle. Mm-hmm. Actually, I lied. Sorry, not the best thing that I watched this. Oh, week. the sec that was the second best thing I watched this week. Okay, the best thing that I watched this week <laughs> <laughs> is the new documentary Jim Henson's I- ah, Idea yes. Man. <clears throat> oh, Joe, is, Joe Bridges were talking about that in the chat earlier. Is really, really well made and really, really good. It is just like a, a story about Jim Henson and not just the Muppets, but like they have they show footage that has like never been seen. Oh, really? Cool. Because they had like full access to, this is directed by Ron Howard too. Oh, nice. Full access to the family's like library of early, early projects mm-hmm. before he went and did the Muppets. Okay. Um, And he was just like a creative fucking genius. He was essentially a, a very experimental filmmaker who ended up 
doing who ended up obviously he ended up doing the Muppets, which was like the one of the biggest things that he did. I can't um, remember. Did he do Fraggle Rock as yes, well? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And he was a, a guy who would always do a project to a certain extent and then feel like he needs to move <clears throat> on and do the next thing. Mm. And uh, they show a lot of his early experimental short films that he did and kind of like very vignette type filmmaking where it's just, like, I don't want to say a stream of consciousness, but just like a lot of scenes put together that aren't necessarily, necessarily correlated, mm-hmm. but it like all flows together in mm-hmm. his style of, of, of making a, a movie or a short film. Mm-hmm. At one point they're talking about how he wanted to create an experience that essentially was <laughs> like a night, a nightclub. But he wasn't trying to make a nightclub. That's just what it would end up being. Right. It's a room with multiple projectors showing different things that he created. Hmm. And it would be like something that would go out like in multiple. Like a traveling road show or something. I, I don't know if it's traveling. I think it was like in different parts of one city or different parts of the U.S. or something. Hmm. It's a project that never came to fruition because he ended up doing something else instead. And, and it shows how just like how tenacious he was in work Mm -hmm. and almost to the detriment of like his family because he would be so caught up in his own work that he would just not be at home because in the beginning him it was him and his wife who were working together and doing like these public access shows yeah and doing puppetry and uh, kermit was the first not the first one he made but it was like the one that stayed throughout his entire career and okay. he wasn't even a frog when he first made him he was just a green man just oh. a green guy <laughs> just okay. a green guy yeah interesting <laughs> and it was it was emotional there were parts parts in the doc where it's like nothing sad is happening but it's just so wholesome that mm-hmm. it's like you just feel like the emotions rising you're a, you're a big muppet guy too huh yeah i am a big muppet guy i love the muppets oh, clearly okay <laughs> and it talks about like his dark like his works on Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and how Dark Crystal was a a success, but Labyrinth was a failure when it first released. Really? I would have thought the opposite. Yeah. That's what I would think too. And how the Muppets was something that nowhere in the U S no channel in the U S or network in the U S wanted to broadcast broadcast that. So he had to do it. He had to go to London and that's where it started. And then it took over. Mm. All I remember about watching the first Muppet movie, the 1979 Muppets movie, Mm -hmm. is thinking, look at all these insane hippies twacked out (laughs) on acid and marijuana and driving a car full of puppets. You know, there's nine of them crammed in the footwells of this freaking old DeSoto or something. (laughs) And they're like driving down the road and filming it. And I'm like, that evolved into so so many cool Mm. things from my childhood. Yeah, it became a cultural icon. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And they show a lot of behind the scenes, like the interviews they have, they have Frank Oz, who was like one of his longest like partners in, in that industry. And also they talked to Jennifer Connelly and like her experience with, with him on, on, on Labyrinth. Labyrinth yeah. mm-hmm. And a lot of his family is in it too, because they are in the industry as well. Mm. And how did he die? Pneumonia. Oh. Damn, that sucks. He, he didn't go to the doctor and that's how he died. Oh, he didn't go to the doctor. Oh man. Tyler's going to meet the same fate. <laughs> that wet, that wet, get, get, take care of that wet cough. Yeah. You're going to die if trench foot keeps slipping in your socks. <laughs> <laughs> Got that, yeah. <laughs> get the ingrown toenail that just goes, goes wild. I gotta get marinating gotta, in there overnight. But yeah. I'm sorry, I gotta cancel. I have to. I got gangrene. Wash your foot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was. It was just. Uh, she's just a really fucking creative dude. Where's that, that streaming? That's on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. Oh, and yeah, and uh, it was just. It was really good. Cool. And they, really, really well made. Um, Joe Bridges says that he went down the rabbit hole and watched a bunch of his shorts. After you watch the, this fantastic doc, mm-hmm. it says there's a bunch of them scattered across the internet. Canopy has about seven or eight of them. Most are around four minutes or so, so they're easy watches. And his favorite was Drum West. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I'm going to try to see if I can find where I find those online. Maybe put some in the show notes because I'm really interested about those as well. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's that's what I watched this week. Cool. Anything else? No. Okay, cool. So thank you to everyone in the chat who's participated. Joe Bridges, Heather Sachs, Joel's here for a minute. Who else do we have in the in the in the chat? Anybody else? We had a couple of new ones. Sunny Boo. I feel like I've seen that name before. Hmm. And then Angry Otter Reacts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're still there or not, but yeah, thanks for everybody for hop- hopping in and saying what's up in the chat. I uh, really appreciate it. 
And thank you to our cool ass yard duties, yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, Heather Sachs in the chat, Ryan Corbin, and Chris. If you want to support us on the Patreon, hit us up at patreon.com slash middle class film class. Until next time. Thank you for joining us yet again. Follow us later on in the week as we review a very long engagement, a Patreon pick from Binge Lord Dan. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MCFC podcast, and send us an email, MCFC podcast at gmail.com. Yes, and please follow us on Instagram at Middle Class Film Class and leave us a voicemail, why don't you, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at Podcast MCFC and on TikTok at Middle Class Film Class. And please, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, head on over and hit subscribe. It means a lot. We'll see you next time. Au revoir. See ya. Au revoir. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.